We are having an absolutely ridiculous time, James. We've had all kinds of interesting things over the last 24 hours, and this will be our fourth leopard in 24 hours, which is really quite amazing. So you can see the big Tingana, and Seb and I are just kicking ourselves because we drove here five minutes ago. Well, actually, we started our game drive here, and then, and I was saying that I heard alarm calls this side, and I had a good feeling on Leopard Alley, and well, there's Tingana right there. So we must have missed him earlier, but at least we've managed to find and catch up with him now. And he's looking around and looking quite hungry. So I think he's possibly trying to go hunting at this time. You can see his tummy is quite sucked in. But if he heads straight south from where he is now, he's going to end up getting a collision course with Hosanna. He's going to go straight to where Hosanna is. And we know that Tingana does sometimes go to treehouse dams. It's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here and whether or not he ends up in Hosanna's area. It is undoubtedly him with a little smiley face on his shoulder and that big dewlap that he has. But he is definitely looking hungry and as though he's trying to find something to eat. So I would imagine he's going to be on the prowl for sure. Look at that dewlap. He is massive. You realize when you see him just how much growing little Hosanna has got to do. Anya, who's 12 years old. Hello, Anya. Welcome, and I hope that you're enjoying this afternoon. You want to know how leopards kill their prey. Well, Anya, what they will do is they will use their camouflage to try and ambush that prey, which means they sit in wait, and they'll wait. hopefully that that leopard will come, I mean, the animal will come very close to them. Then they'll use very, very, very strong, powerful front legs to explode out of that area and run after their prey animal. And then from there, they're going to use their front legs to grab and strong front legs to pull them down. And then they'll use their mouth with their big canines, so those big long teeth, to try and grab the animal by the throat. And that will mean that it will able to then suffocate or to sever the jugular of that particular prey animal. So there he comes, ambling along as only Tingana can do. Now hopefully he doesn't decide to cross down this drainage because if he does, there's no way for us to be able to keep up with him. Oh, but he's going to stop out in the open. Look at that. Hello, big boy. You are looking very good. A little thin, but still looking massive. And like I say, he's got to have one of the biggest dewlaps out there. Look, he's seen something now. What's interesting is he has, is heading away from Tingana, but I mean from Hosanna, but what he is heading towards is that drag mark, and he will pick up the scent very quickly. But you see he's salivating as well. I wonder if there's not another leopard here that he's seen, because he's salivating, and when they salivate is normally when they see another leopard. It's not when they see a food item. When they're hunting, they don't worry too much about um, salivating. It's normally if they're excited by seeing something else. It could also be because he's hot and he's panting, but look how he's trotting off into this bush here. I wonder if we're going to be able to keep up with him, Seb. Um... So, Anya, you're wondering if female leopards will fight for territory. Anya, yes they will. We had a f two females fighting the other day, Shongile and Tandi. So females will fight for territory because they're fighting for places to have their young ones, for food, for water. So they're going to make sure that they try and keep those areas for themselves. They're not going to want their offspring to have danger from other females so they will fight with one another but it tends to be the males that fight more than the females the females sometimes will just see each other and try and move away but they will sometimes fight as well what have you seen boy you've seen something i can't see down into the strangers it's just far too thick to be able to see anything and there's really very few places to cross. It's a steep drainage i know this one very well because we often walk it when we are on our bushwalks and we can kind of get in here and hide away from elephants a lot of the time so if he goes down we're gonna have a real struggle to try and keep up with him but he's definitely aware of something no don't go that way no Oof. <laughs> all right I didn't do it, you're wondering why he's drooling. So, as I was saying just now, it could be for two different reasons. The one reason could be that he's drooling because it's very hot and he's been panting excessively. And the panting means that 
he's getting a lot of moisture developing and he's then unfortunately starting to kind of drool from the the dryness of his tongue as excessive saliva is being produced or he's seen another animal that means that his adrenaline picks up and then he starts to sort of salivate like that now Seb I wonder if we can't get through there he's just dropped down behind here so let's just try another way around sorry poor Rusty is getting a bit of a workout today between the honey badger debacle and Tingana it's going to be a rough day for Rusty. Rusty, you picked a bad day to come back to work. But at least we can get into the riverbed here, which is great news, because I didn't think we would be able to. Come on, come on. There we go. Sorry, Seb, you are right there? Yeah. Mm, can you smell the popcorn, Seb? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, there's a... Dr there's a drag mark here as well. I wonder if there wasn't another kill here at some point. Oh, I don't know if we're going to get through here. Yeah, we're going to have to go around. It looks like another drag mark here. I wonder... This could also be for a porcupine because porcupines will also feed in these areas and they do have their quills that sometimes drag behind them so it could be for them without really looking properly it's difficult to say um, i don't know how we're going to keep up with him in this jacqueline you're wondering why male leopards have dewlaps well it's much like a male lion's mane in a way it's serves to show females that they are big dominant males also it will have some sort of protective function when these guys are fighting we're gonna have to just drop our aerial so I do apologize if there's a bit of a breakup in signal while we go through here so we'll go through quickly um, so they will do that also that excess skin is going to help with them being able to um, protect themselves from being bitten by other leopards <sighs> I don't know how we're gonna follow this male, but we're gonna try. This is not a very friendly section, and Tingana has lost me twice before in this area, so it's not a pleasant place to follow him. Come on, Rusty, here we go. So you can see we're going, we're shooting for the moon by going up in the air like that. See if we can try and find where he went, Seb. Um, but it is thick in here. And lots of monkey orange, which is a horrible type of plant. Um, no, I don't see anything there. He must have gone across here and moved off. Can you see him? Yeah. Oh, there he is. So we've managed to find him. Seb's eagle eye, eagle eye, not eagle owl. Eagle eye has spotted him once again. Is he hunting a nyala? Is there nyala just in front? Okay, we'll switch off him because we're making a lot of noise to be if he's hunting. So I'd rather just keep quiet. There's the nyala. I can see the nyala in front, and I can see where Tingana is. So the nyala is behind those wattles over there. Um, and Tingana's to your left there, there he is. There he is. So there goes Tingana. He's slowly but surely creeping up on these Nyala. So that's what he spotted. And he's using this undulating terrain to perfect effect. So going down using the bank to be able to stalk up closer. I can see the Nyala up ahead. They have got no idea that Tingana's anywhere near them. And it's going to be super interesting to see if he can get any closer. His ideal strategy would be probably to come down into the riverbed again and use this thicket just to get a little bit closer and then from there launch a surprise attack. But this is a perfect place for a leopard to hunt. And this is why the leopards love moving around in this area because they can get into these thickets and their spots just are perfect camouflage so they can creep around. You can just see his spots behind all of that. I think he's just behind there, isn't he, Seb? Somewhere there. But I'm hesitant to move because I don't want the Nyala to bolt off because of the noise that we're making. The Nyala are somewhere in that area at the moment. So if I see them moving a little bit, we will try and reposition slightly. Up 
planes and trains, you're wondering if leopards will eat more in colder weather. I suppose they would because their body is probably using a lot more energy to heat up. But then again, staying cool also uses energy. So you'll find that they will hunt if an opportunity presents itself. So sometimes in summer they go through a rut of killing a lot and sometimes it's in winter that they get a lot of meals. You must remember that also in summer is the lambing season for most of our antelopes. So they take advantage of that and they will stuff themselves on all of these small babies that are inexperienced and are not able to outrun them. So they do eat a lot in the summer months as well. And, and like I say, the heat will, ut will mean that they'll also utilize quite a bit of energy. I'm just going to try and see. The Nyala have drifted slightly from where we are. I can't see him anymore, Seb. Is he still there? Can you still see him? Oh, there he is. Mr. P, you're wondering what the biggest prey item Tingana could potentially bring down. Well, the biggest item that I've seen him bring down was about a year old giraffe. In fact, maybe just over a year old. It was a massive giraffe that he brought down, so which was really quite something. But he's also brought down adult wildebeest. He's brought down baby buffalo. He was once even seen feeding off a fully grown buffalo. Now, that was last year when there was the drought and the buffalo was very weak, but he had was seen with the buffalo alive the night before and the buffalo was a bit doddery and the next morning he was found there with the buffalo feeding off it so whether he actually killed the buffalo or the buffalo died of natural causes and he then just stayed around and scavenged is anyone's guess but i have seen him bring down a one-year-old giraffe which is a massive meal so he can still bring down very large animals for you see how he's slinking and using the thickets in the cover So you see him just slinking across. Now I don't know how we're going to get back towards him again, Seb. Let's see if we can go through here. The Nyala's gone further down the drainage, so... Let's see. Oh, we're so lucky we've got a nice little crossing point right here. It's almost perfectly designed for us to get over. Come on, Rusty, keep quiet. You don't need to go to gym today. You've got a perfect core workout by this undulating terrain. It gives a good ab workout, that's for sure. Just like Taylor. So Taylor's working the biceps. I'm doing the abs. We've got a complete safari workout. There he is on top, you see? And there's the Nyala down here. So he's on top over there, slinking through, and he's coming around using this thicket, and hopefully he's gonna come down towards where this Nyala is on my right-hand side. So the Nyala is just in here. Now, oh, sorry, Seb, I know the angle is terrible. I'm gonna try to get us up, but that Nyala is looking. It's watching in that direction. So I'm trying to just stay quiet and give Tingana the and the Nyala the best possible chance for either one to pick up their respective targets, for so to speak. But that Nyala is absolutely oblivious. Look how it's trying to smell. Big deep breaths that it's taking in. Where's Tingana gone? The last time I saw him, he was creeping just on the top side of these Nyala. He wasn't very far at all. The Nyala knows something's up. You can see the way she was taking in those deep breaths. Look at how she's watching. She can hear every now and then there's movement. So I'm sure she knows something's up. The male is completely unperturbed. The male's behind that bush. You might just see his horns moving every now and then. He doesn't seem to be too worried about what's going on. But I'm sure Tingana's in that thicket just to their left. I believe all of you are rooting for Tingana and not the Nyala. Well, yes, I suppose Tingana does need a meal, and we do have lots of Nyala, so it would be good for him. But it's always sad when you see them hunting these animals, and can you imagine the fear that this animal must be going through? There's, it knows there's something afoot. It knows something's around. You can see it's trying to see, trying to sniff. It's trying to listen. So it's really difficult for these Nyala. They... Can you a situation where you know something's here, but you can't see it? It must be a horrific way to kind of live life. But Catherine, you say the Nyala knows something's up? Definitely. Look at that nose. Look how it's opening and taking deep, deep breaths. And ears are listening. Now the 
Tingana is walking the right way to get away from where Tingana is. If Tingana had stayed where he was, which is right where we are now, this Nyala would have been walking straight towards him. But it could be that Tingana has worked out that the wind and the angle of the sun is not ideal for him to have hunted from here because the wind feels like it's coming over my shoulder. In fact, actually, it's blowing towards me. So he really should have just stayed where he was and shown a bit of patience. Can you see him, Seb? No, male Nyala is here. It's just on my right. Let me just go over this ridge because I've unfortunately got Seb in a very bad place at the moment. Chastity, you saying you've never seen Tingana hunt. Normally he strolls by and disappears in two minutes and that's the end of it. I know Chastity, he's a bit of a difficult leopard to concentrate on and to try and find and to spend time with. But it's really exciting when you see big male leopards hunt like this. It's a, it's incredible display and if he manages to grab one of these Nyala, you'll see that to pull down a Nyala of that size takes tremendous effort and a serious amount of strength so it's going to be quite something if he does get anywhere near those nyala and, and he does go after them but the last time we saw him is just to the left of that nyala so there's a very tall tree that tall tree there that you can see and he was underneath that tall tree so he's not far from where those nyala are but the nyala are starting to now drift a little bit more away from where Tingana was but let's see maybe he's managed to get himself around a bush somewhere and we just can't see him at this stage has got all the elements perfectly aligned for him it's thick it's dense the sun is at a low oblique angle so he can use that to his advantage down here in the riverbed there's not too much of a breeze to speak of so he might use that all to his advantage but look how beautiful that male nyale is white markings the beard i don't know if maybe tingana's moved further down Seb. i'm not sure I don't see any sign of him and I can hear other vehicles further down I wonder if they don't have him and he's gone past these Nyala I might have to just quickly ask for an update from the tax Razor you say oh this is your favorite antelope sadly well Razor don't worry these antelope are still very much in the game you can see they're aware they're looking and they're actually heading the opposite direction to where we last saw tingana so they if anything are putting distance between them and and the predator so they're doing the right thing go ahead tax so i just need to quickly talk on the radio because tax asking me Ah, okay, so Tingana is long gone already. He's going towards our dead white-tailed mongoose, which is quite interesting. Okay, copy. I'm coming there now. I don't know if you'll be able to get a cruiser there, though. Uh, tax. Now, it's interesting because Tingana is going straight towards our dead white-tailed mongoose. I think you're going to have to drop the aerial Seb and then duck for cover. You good? Okay, watch your head. Right, now I need to try and find a way to get to where Tingana is and try and actually get to that white-tailed mongoose. And while I do that, let's go across to Mr. Hendry, who I hope is having a far better time than what we are now. <laughs> 